Hi everyone! Thanks for clicking this video. If you're here, you're probably interested in sustainability, zero waste, minimalism and mental health. And uh, in my previous video, I shared my story and my experience uh, with minimalism, why I subscribe to this uh, philosophy and what it entails for me and how it manifests in my life. And today I wanted to check about the intersection of minimalism and zero waste. zero waste have been existing together on different planes in the discourse uh, but uh, I noticed that uh, recently they've been moving more and more closer together I personally have seen have noticed a surge of minimalism uh, with the rise of decluttering especially with uh, Marie Kondo called Marie Method her books and her show and it has become, uh, that minimalism uh, became sort of a mainstream macro trend of the last decade. Uh, but as minimalism and uh, zero waste are not the same, I think that it's, uh, they go hand in hand together and they definitely, you can definitely benefit from both. I think that uh, for me personally, minimalism is about having items that serve you well for multiple purposes. Therefore, um, minimalism approach prioritizes quality, sustainability in a way that it's uh, long-term longevity and flexibility. And I think that this is a key to making less waste. By reducing the amount of stuff you have and repurposing items you do not need anymore, you get out of the loop of constantly buying new single-use things. <laughs> still in the beginning of your minimalism career you're probably uh, only now realizing um, what things you want in your life and what things you don't want anymore and you're probably thinking about decluttering uh, I think it's important you know to keep the sustainability slash zero waste component to your minimalism and your decluttering and to consider um, the environment when getting rid of your stuff. Yeah, definitely you will be improving your life by uh, putting things away, but where does it all go? <laughs> Nothing goes away without a trace. Resources were spent to create, deliver, maintain and destroy the things that we own. Uh, resources such as time, money, labor, often unfairly paid labor, if materials were sourced often with harm, with harm to the environment, for example, mining or growing um, cotton and stuff like that. And materials were or recycled and during the recycling process CO2 can be created and sometimes you know maybe you even heard about the trash colonialism meaning that um, the rich countries just pay uh, poorer countries to take their trash for recycling or just for storage and it has been a big problem i will link um I'll link a post uh, in the description uh, all in all, this is exactly why we should keep in mind when we want to let go of the things that we don't want or need anymore. The first thing we can do is ask why you're getting rid of it or holding on to something in the first place. Does it remind you of something? Um, is it connected to your fantasy self? Is it connected to your past times? Does it remind you of someone or of what you used to be? Does it fit your does it not fit your body, your home or your lifestyle anymore? And um, is it broken? And if so, can it be fixed? So once you've identified the items you no longer need, you could uh, first try to declutter things by gifting them to someone you know will like it. Here, uh, as a rule of, of a thumb, uh, do not give 
things that are broken that you wouldn't uh, wouldn't want to receive yourself or um, wouldn't want to buy at a secondhand store. I think clothes is probably one of the most being decluttered things. Judging on on the um, YouTube videos, you know, a lot of people going from shopaholic to a minimalist <laughs> um, or just living with 30 pieces of uh, clothing. I think last time I did my clothing audit there was 48 items but I also included loungewear and shoes which a lot of people don't so but you know it's not a competition if you think I'm crazy that I have like 48 um, clothing pieces maybe you think I'm a maximalist for having 48 uh, clothing pieces it's uh, okay what are my tips for decluttering clothes I mentioned that I did wardrobe audit Basically, what it means is that to identify what you have in your wardrobe, you can do it uh, for one season, for two seasons, whatever you like, for all of your clothing. You can divide it into four categories. So it would be new, secondhand, gifted, and unworn. And then when you see the category unworn, you just take a closer look at these items why were they never worn were they gifted and you just you know really wanted them in the first place and just kept them in your wardrobe did you buy them on the spur of the moment and they still have a tag attached with a sale did you plan to wear them with a certain item if so hang them together and make an outfit and then you will probably you will be more likely to reach out to it if you can still return them, uh, maybe do. Um, even though it's not very sustainable to return it, I think it's still better than there is still a chance that it might be resold rather than um, just keeping it in your wardrobe and then giving it, uh, you know, and then it lying in the secondhand shop. If the clothes doesn't fit your body, your taste or your lifestyle anymore and it looks good um, try to sell it sale platforms i use mic plots um in the netherlands but i know that ebay is a big thing if this is a an item of value you know if it's vintage or if it's jewelry or something like that if it's a brand uh, you can uh, try to sell it on kataviki uh, there is also a Facebook marketplace. I think there you can uh, uh, give away and sell things for free. I've even seen uh, uh, real estate being sold on Facebook, so definitely check it out. And another advice, continuing <laughs> some self-restraint and changing your habits uh, to switch to a more minimalist mindset is to have a shopping ban. Um, what it entails is basically trying to have a period of time when you don't buy anything or when you don't buy particular categories. Some of the categories could be uh, no skin or no new skin or beauty products. I know a lot of people that have um, a lot of uh, beauty products lying around being gifted and so having a no buy period no buy month or, or shopping ban on them for a certain period of time will help you complete all the uh the ones that you have fill in all all the tubes and recycle them properly and then already uh, consider changing it up or switching to more sustainable ones cruelty free whatever same goes for uh, makeup as well and, and if you really like makeup and you have a lot of makeup products especially if you have such thing as a makeup subscription I would advise maybe cancel the subscription come finish up all the products that you like gift some of the uh, ones that uh, you don't really like and they're still good especially in the maybe in the family or not the ones that go uh, close in touch with your lips or with your eyelashes maybe you can gift um, rouge and whatnot 
and the obvious one is of course to put uh, some ban on your uh, clothes shopping uh, for this so you've just decluttered or you're considering decluttering and kind of style advices advice videos they say okay so now you declutter and now you make a list of things that you need to buy i think that's kind of wasteful and maybe try first to declutter and not buy anything at all and see if you think like on one day getting ready you feel mm, shit i wish i had this thing and then maybe it will go away and or sometimes uh, when you declutter clothes maybe just put it in uh, in a box and put it under your bed and not just get rid of it straight away and then when you get ready you think mm, i wish i had this blouse oh wait it's still here so you remembered about it and you want it so maybe then you bring it back from the penalty box <laughs> And if it happens several times to other items, that means maybe you've decluttered them too early. Or sometimes it happens that, you know, trying to be all, all cool and minimalist, you get rid of um, all of your uh, sweaters that you consider like mm, not really stylish and really like them anymore. But they are quite expensive. So maybe just keep one or two uh, at hand. And even though they are um, not super stylish just keep them and if you get cold you have something to put on <laughs> you wouldn't have to rush uh, and order something or go to a, a store to buy uh, something when you feel cold These are the tips for um, sustainable and uh, uh, for sustain sustainable decluttering. Let me know um, if you've ever decluttered. If uh, what did you get rid of? Um, how how it felt? Uh, did you kind of bounce back and get a lot of things back together, or you decluttered once and for for all, and you feel awesome now or is it a constant prog process which is more like for me i think after i shed a lot of items um i kept what i liked and then at some point i felt like ah that's mm, i don't want this anymore and stopped just buying more and more things the most important thing is when you're decluttering and after you're sitting in your house and you realize oh this is gone this is gone not to feel the sense of scarcity because sense of scarcity is actually what is making us buy so if uh, having an extra belt uh, is making you happy just keep it um, you you are still a minimalist you know <laughs> No, having just one of each thing is not a, um, you know, minimalists don't have a monopoly on all owning only one thing. Of. So, um, <laughs> I think this is it. Thank you so much for watching. Um, please like this video, subscribe to my channel, and hit the notification bell button.